I'm a firm believer that in life you got to throw some spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. Now, I'm not planning on throwing any spaghetti today, but we are going to style it. What's shaking bacon? I'm Tony Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography. So if you are into that, you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But meanwhile, today we're talking about food styling because I've heard from a bunch of you out there who've said, okay, you know, I'm feeling pretty confident with my camera, but it's really the food that's my big challenge, right? Like how do I make a dish look just extra special for the camera and really make it pop? So today I'm sharing with you my favorite tools that I always have on hand in the studio, things that are ready to grab so that in those moments when the food's just, you know, not looking so great or there's something I need to change, that I have a tool ready to rock and I can take the party to the next level. And assisting us today is the humble bowl of spaghetti. We're gonna doctor it up with some meatballs and some other things, but this is a really great dish to show off some of these tools. So let's go ahead and jump on in. So first and foremost, you are absolutely going to need to have paper towels at your disposal. And in particular, I highly recommend if you can get them where you are, the Bounty select a size. These are, these are a food stylist favorite for many reasons uh, of course paper towels are great of course for cleaning up spills but also dabbing little things on plates just cleaning up areas if you can find how to open it and unroll it <laughs> okay it shall not be so complicated I can't I can't talk and unroll paper towels at the same time Okay, so the reason that food stylists absolutely love this brand is because it is low lint. So what's happening is when you're going in there and maybe you're dabbing something or you're cleaning up the side of a plate, something like that, if there's a lot of lint on the paper towel, which the cheaper paper towels have that, it's all of a sudden gonna leave those on your plate. And then when you go to photograph it, especially if you're using something like a macro lens or using a black plate, you're gonna see all these little flecks of white. And you're like, oh. So annoying. So go ahead and use the Bounty Selecta size. It is low lint, it'll be a lifesaver. Now in the same sort of arena of the dabbing world, right? Dab, dab? No, I don't know how to dab, I'm not that cool. Um, but <laughs> we have these little Q-tips and I like these ones in particular. Uh, these are actually makeup ones. I'll link all of these products below. So if you wanna grab these, you can go ahead and do that. So I like these better than Q-tips, uh, first and foremost, because again, they won't leave behind any lint. Uh, and they're just a little bit Bit more compact and small so you can really get in there whereas a q-tip's a little more fluffy uh, this is going to be a lot more precise and exact and of course these are disposable and you can buy them in like packs of 600. i don't know what they officially call these but we're gonna call them makeup tips makeup tips that's a whole different channel and then along the lines of the cleanup factor i always like to have a really nice soft light fan brush. So you don't want something with super harsh bristles or anything. This is really nice and soft because we can just get in there and we can whisk away any little, you know, fragments of whatever crumbs that we don't want. You know, sometimes we do want crumbs because they're very artful looking, but any of those excess crumbs um, or dust or anything remaining you want to get rid of, this is really great to just whick it away. Nice to have a fan brush. So those are pretty much all of my cleanup tools, the things that just, you know, take care of the little details, make sure it's all looking pristine and sharp and fabulous. Uh, but the next lineup of items are all things to help construct the food because sometimes food doesn't want to sit the way it's supposed to. It doesn't, you know, lay quite right. You need to kind of prop it up. So that's where these makeup sponges come into play. You know, so many makeup tools, which I find fascinating. There are a lot of makeup tools that work super well for food photography. So instead of making up our face, we're making up our spaghetti. And these are perfect for propping things. So say, for example, you have a stack of pancakes um, or even this pasta and you want it to just sit up a little bit more, you can stick this up behind it underneath and it'll help prop it. But because it's squishy, it's not gonna like force the food. It's gonna sort of rest on it like a gentle little pillow. So they these are notoriously littered throughout my pictures. Anytime something's just not sitting quite right or I need just a little bit of angle on it, these are really great. Great little tool here. And then two, you can also cut these little guys down. So you take your scissors and if you just need sort of a little piece of it, right? And these are also really great if you're doing a flat lay. So say for example, you've got something and the things are sort of like, they're round bottles. This is the worst, right? You're trying to photograph round bottles and they just kind of want to tilt on you. And you're like, no, I want the label up. You can stick this, you know, 
cut these down to size so you can't see them, stick them up underneath that bottle and it'll help it stay in place. And then of course I just used my tiny scissors, which I always have these tiny scissors on hand. I like having little ones because well, I don't have the biggest of hands out there and so it's nice. Um, these have a really small tip to them so I have a lot of control. Uh, they're also super sharp so that if I need to you know, trim some greens or even in this pasta, say I'm like, I really don't like that guy right there. I can just go in, snip it, and then go in with my tweezers, yet another helpful thing to have on hand. Where did it go? Oh, it went right here. And pull out that little piece I just snipped off, remove it without disturbing the rest of the food. Because if you've ever gotten in there, you know, with your fingers and some kitchen shears, and you're like, I just wanna trim that off, and then suddenly you've like undone the entire dish, the trick is to really just having some really nice fine tools. These are actually eyelash tweezers, like for applying fake eyelashes, not that I know anything about that. Uh, but these are really great for that. They're easy to control. I like that they're plastic. Some people really get into like those culinary ones, those long ones, I don't know, it's just, not the way I roll. I really like something small and compact, so that works for me. But some sort of tweezers are pretty much necessary for any food styling you're gonna do. Now, similar to the makeup sponges with the idea of keeping things in place, another thing that does a great job of that, although I use it in different scenarios, is museum putty. So this is, you know, I think they've got other names for it, I can't remember. Um, but it's this sort of like tacky substance that you can go in and what's nice is that it's an adhesive, right? So it'll stick to things, but it's not gonna damage anything. So it's not gonna leave, you know, residue or nasty stuff on your pretty bowls. If you're using antique pieces, this is completely safe to use on all of those things. So here's for an example, like I've got this little dish going here. So say I wanna do some sort of crazy thing and I've got this dish at an angle. This is not a real life scenario, but say it was. <laughs> And I stick that spoon there. Well, that spoon, that spoon is, spoon is gonna stay. But then I can just twist it off. Spoon comes right off. So this is just really great for any time you kind of need something to stay in place, stop moving around, and of course it's customizable to size depending on the size of the object. But this stuff just comes in handy all the time. So along the same lines of constructing the food, another thing that is really helpful, especially for building things like burgers, um, or when we're doing like maybe stacks of pancakes, or you want to do a creative shot maybe you're like building up french fries and you need them to all stack really neatly and nicely together but they're not doing it naturally on their own it's great to have these t-pins so these are really great because they're really sturdy right they're more sturdy than maybe a toothpick um, and then two they've got this nice little anchor point on the top so it lays flat and it really holds everything together so i find these just come in handy all the time but similarly i also always have toothpicks on hand because toothpicks are so flexible you can of course if you just need a little piece of it and you want to hold maybe like I did some lettuce wraps two weeks ago and I wanted the set ends to overlap one another I just broke it here and then I just inserted it where I needed it and lo and behold it held together and then there is the whole entire world of spices and salts and peppers and all the things and depending on the type of food that you're typically cooking or preparing uh, you might have a very specific set of spices like if you are always cooking spicy food I would recommend always have red pepper flavor on hand it just really helps to fill out a scene add some visual interest to a dish right we're layering things on top of the food uh, but the things that I always have on hand are two different kinds of salt so I always have kosher salt and then I also have Malden sea salt and we love Malden sea salt because it's those really huge flakes right like they're just they're glorious and they're fabulous but they're not always called for sometimes they're too large for the particular dish and you're like okay need something a little less over the top a little more understated and so then and that's when you're going with something like a kosher salt. So, you know, there are many dishes that I photograph that if you were to actually eat them, they would be way over salted, but it sure does look good. And then as far as pepper goes, you definitely wanna get whole peppercorns and then get a really good grinder that has an adjustable grind on it so that you can do big coarse chunks and then you can go all the way down to really fine sort of pieces of pepper. So something like this pepper grinder that I absolutely love, which I wish I could link to it. I cannot, this is an 
actually an original that was handmade by my uncle. Um, but there are plenty of pepper grinders out there that exist. I will link some good ones below uh, that have adjustable grinding on there. Okay, it's very important because sometimes you want something with a coarse grind, like a steak au poivre. You really want to see the peppercorns and you really want to see that chunkiness. Whereas something that's maybe a little bit more understated, like a salad or a pasta, you want a finer grind on that. And then I'm also always finding that I will typically at least once a month shoot something that requires cinnamon sticks. These just little guys are great for decor, adding a little interest. And what's great is these last for a long time. I'm pretty sure these are six months old. I mean, keep an eyeball on them. You don't want them looking funky, but there's really nothing for these to look funky about until you really start to beat them up and you're throwing them in different scenes and they start to crack and you're like, okay, time to retire those. And then another thing that I love to have, especially around like August, September timeframe, as I'm ramping up all the holiday content for clients, um, is star anise. It's just so pretty and they just add such a fun little pop of personality to the pictures, to the food, and then again, communicate those really nice warm spices. And then I also always have sort of these various mixed herbs. <laughs> um, this I believe is an Italian herb mix. Herbs de Provence would be great. Um, just something that if I'm ever doing a soup or I'm doing a salad or just something that there's herbs in it, right? Because I'm not adding ingredients to recipes and to pictures that aren't actually in the recipe. That's sort of a personal pet peeve of mine. Um, but I will doctor it up and add a little bit of extra on top that maybe the home cook who was making this recipe wouldn't do otherwise, but they can just add, again, visual interest and texture. Visual interest and texture. I'm sounding like a broken record at this point. Visual interest and texture. I mean, clearly I have an obsession with these two things, but they really, to me, are what set really good images apart from great images because it's just, it brings your eye in, it tells the story, it makes the food more appealing. All right, and now I've kind of left the best for last. These are the things that we're spraying on the food. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I'll always have oil and paint brushes on hand. I personally don't do the whole oil thing because it can veer on the side of greasy and I don't want my food to look greasy. So I got this really great tip from a food stylist friend of mine and I have never turned back. And that is always to have two spray bottles on you, one being water, which is just helpful to, you know, add a little glitz and glam, but having a bottle that is a combination of water and glycerin. And if you've not seen glycerin, it's what makes soap. It's non-toxic, it's good stuff, uh, and a little goes a long way. So, I mean, this lasts for like forever and a day. But you add just a couple of drops of glycerin and you add water to it and you get a great little spray bottle. I love these spray bottles. I actually think these are from Walmart. Um, and these are fantastic because they have this really nice fine mist, which you shouldn't shoot on your computer for goodness sakes. Um, but it's this really nice fine mist. It's very controlled so it's not going all over your scene. Uh, but what happens with the glycerin is that it interacts with the water and it kind of beads up. So if you saw my picture of the sandwich and you saw those nice little water droplets that were on the tomato that just take an average tomato and make it really just look luscious and fabulous, that was with the help of glycerin because the glycerin holds those water molecules. It hangs onto it as opposed to the water which just just kind of slicks off. So glycerin really honestly is probably my favorite thing just to have on hand. It's gonna add that extra sparkle to your fruits and your veggies. And you throw this on some raspberries and they just oh shimmer and shine, it's beautiful. And you can also add it to things like your Thanksgiving turkey. If you just need a little extra glimmer on the top, this is the highlight adder and I absolutely love it. And finally, saving the best for last. I mean, maybe not the best, but definitely one of my favorites is always having kitchen bouquet. This is a browning and seasoning sauce. This stuff is kind of a little funky. It reminds me of like soy sauce meets Worcestershire sauce. It's one of those thick brown sauces, um, but this is a lot thicker and more viscous than those other ones. So what this is great for is if you got things like our meatballs today, right? And the meatballs coming straight out of the oven maybe look a little sad. They're a little bit gray, right? Like the ground beef didn't do that magical brownie thing that we really wanted. So that's when you get out your paintbrush, right? Like I always have a good selection of paintbrushes depending on what I'm painting that day. Something small, something a little wider. This is maybe my all around favorite one. Uh, but what I do is I take just a little 
cup right here and I've got a little, little bit of water. I don't want to dilute this too much because again, I really like that viscosity factor that we've got here. That's like a million dollar word today. All right, using the big words. And so we pour the kitchen bouquet in here, mix it up. And then what I do is I recommend painting or doctoring up any food before you actually place it on the dish. So I'm eventually gonna put the meatballs in with our spaghetti, but I wanna paint them before I put them in because what happens is if I place the meatballs and then I'm painting, I can't necessarily get full coverage on that meatball. And two, I'm running the risk of splattering on my white plate, which then means I need to go get my makeup tips. I'm creating more work for myself. So go ahead and paint them before you place them because this stuff is gonna stick to the surface. It's not gonna suddenly disappear, but oh, Oh my golly, look at that. Oh, it's looking good. It's nice and brown. So we're taking what were some sad kind of tan gray meatballs and turning them into beautiful brown. Now, is this cheating? I don't know, but <laughs> the food looks a lot better this way. I wouldn't eat it though. I would not eat these meatballs now. So this stuff is great for hamburgers. It's great for sloppy joes. It's great for turkeys, chicken, really any sort of meats that are brown that just need a little extra help. You couldn't quite render it right in the oven, whatever was the case. You just need a little extra color. You bust out the kitchen bouquet. And then I just remember one more very important thing that I love to have on hand, super helpful, especially if you're dealing with cheese, is a heat gun. So you can pick these up at the hardware store. This one was $20. It is not a fancy one it has a low setting and a high setting which well hold on let me let me demonstrate why won't this thing plug in what? all right holy cow that was way harder than it needed to be all right so you turn it on like this or like this very nice okay so but you're probably looking at this and saying well Joni I have a hair dryer why do I need to buy this well first of all this is very specifically focusing all the heat that's coming out of it and it's more about the heat that's being emitted as opposed to air coming out of it there is air coming out of it but not like a blow dryer so say for example I was trying to melt some cheese on the side of a burger right like I built up this beautiful burger and I've got some layers of cheese and I've got the cheese is unmelted right I put it on unmelted and so then I've got the those little points kind of coming out just next to the meat. If I hit it with this, it'll just do a great job of just kind of curving that over, making it look nice and soft and melty. Whereas if I hit that with an actual blow dryer, it would blow the bun off the top, it would throw things askew, it would really, all that air that comes from a blow dryer would mess things up. So a heat gun is really, really helpful. And you can do it just on low, or you can do it on high. And it's also great for browning things. So when I've done things like french fries, if my french fries just don't have quite enough color on them and I want to crisp them up a little extra heat gun great for that and the way that this is different than say a kitchen torch which also a helpful thing to have I would say not quite as important as maybe a heat gun um, a kitchen torch is great for brulees but if you tried to throw this on some cheese if you I mean go ahead and try it and you'll see that the cheese will start to bubble up you'll get a lot of imperfections you might get some burned spots because we're dealing with actual fire right <laughs> dangerous things here. We go from makeup tools on here to construction tools. I mean, food styling, it is not for the faint of heart. So I believe if we were keeping track, <laughs> that was 16 different things that I always have on hand in my studio ready to rock to take the food from good to great and hopefully there were a couple things in there that maybe you weren't aware of things that now you're inspired to add to your setup so as usual here on youtube i have all the details linked in the description box below but of course if you have any questions or you have other things that you're looking at or things that you love to use that i didn't include in this video please comment below we would love to share the knowledge here with the community and two if you are not already a member we would love to have you over in our facebook group so i've also got that that link below. It is a really fun, positive group of food photographers, people of all varying levels who love to share their pictures that they're taking, look for constructive criticism, helpful feedback. It's super positive. We have a great time and we would love to have you there. And so with that, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you eat something delicious. I hope you take a ton of pictures of it. Although take the pictures before you eat it. You knew that. Uh, but thanks for stopping by. I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.